Hello, my name is Hans George Campbell, and today I thought I'd work on my Picasso 2 graphics board for my Amiga 2000. I'm out here in my shop, and I'm going to be working on this uh, Picasso 2 board so I can use it in one of my Amiga 2000 computers. Um, but because I'm planning on using an LCD monitor with this card, um, I have to remove this 100, a 100 ohm resistor right here. Um, it's a 100 ohm resistor and it needs to be unsoldered and removed. Because if you don't remove this resistor, when you hook up a modern LCD monitor up to this display, okay, and you got your pass-through cable going in here from your flicker fixture scan doubler board, what it's going to do is it's going to shoot 12 volts through this resistor directly to ground, which is going to fry that resistor. And it's going to turn this whole area of the board brown. So if you have a Picasso 2 board, it's very important that you remove this resistor. Okay? Now, I talked with Tobias. Um, he's one of the guys that worked on the Picasso 2 board. And he says, Hi Hans, the card will live happily without the resistor. It was meant to supply 12 volts on an output pin regarding an old Visa standard to supply an external monitor switch. Today, this supply isn't needed anymore. Just leave the resistor off the board. It won't do any harm. Regards, Tobias. Okay. So that's directly from one of the guys that actually worked on the Picasso 2 board. It's okay to unsolder this resistor and leave it off. Okay. Now, another thing that I'm going to be doing is I want to I want to unsolder these three uh, capacitors. They're four seven, 470 microfarad, 10 volt. I'm going to be replacing them with 470 microfarad, 16 volt. And I'm going to show you what those capacitors uh, look like. Um, they're these here. They're, they're very high quality, um, very high quality Panasonic capacitors. They're made in Japan. They're very nice capacitors, and they're vented. See how the tops are vented? You know they are vented, but yeah, these are very high quality. So, and the lead space and the lead pitch, right, the spacing between the leads, that's called the lead pitch. That's the same as the lead pitch of the original capacitors um, that are on the board. So, yeah, it should work out pretty good. Okay. Okay, so the other capacitors on the board, um... There are eight 10 microfarad uh, capacitors at 35 volt. Eight 10 microfarad capacitors at 35 volt. And two 2.2 microfarad capacitors at 63 volt. And I thought that was a weird value, but yeah, two of the capacitors on this board 
for a 2.2 microfarad 63 volt. Yeah. And of course there's the three 470 microfarad capacitors at 10 volt. But I'm going to replace those with uh, 16 volt caps, which I think will be fine. So anyway, that's um, what I'm going to be doing today on this board. I'm going to be uh, removing this 100 ohm resistor and I'm going to be replacing these three capacitors with the new ones. Now I'm not going to do these today because I don't have them yet. I don't have these in stock. Uh, so I have to buy these, and I usually buy them a hundred at a time, unless they're weird ones like that 2.2 microfarad. That's a weird, you know, value. So I'm probably only going to buy about ten of those. But these other ones, the um, the eight ten microfarad at 35 volt, um, I'll buy a hundred of those just to have them in stock because I have 10 microfarad but they're 16 volt and 25 volt and there must be a good reason why Commodore well not Commodore um, Village Tronic they're the ones that made this board I believe this board was made in Germany specifically for the Amiga 2000 um, there must have been a reason why the engineers at Village Tronic chose 35 volt 10 microfarad capacitors. So I'm going to go ahead and get the same value for those. Um, but yeah. I'm also going to reseat these chips and these memory chips here. I'll reseat those. And I'll take 100% uh, cotton makeup pads. Yes, there I go again on those cotton makeup pads. But they work great for a lot of stuff in, in the electronics industry. I'll you know, put a little bit of alcohol in the cotton makeup pad, and I'll clean these fingers here. Right here, I'll clean both sides of those. Um, they're starting to look dirty. Okay. Um, the Picasso 2 board, okay, and GVP's uh, Spectrum board, graphics card, they both use the exact same chip, this main chip here. So, the other card that I actually recommend, uh, besides the Picasso 2 board, for an Amiga 2000 computer, is GVP's Spectrum board. Those boards work very well. They work really well. And they both use the same chip, and they both have, I think, the same amount of memory. Either one or two megabytes of memory. So, yeah. Now, one thing about the Picasso 2 board is that it maps its memory in the 16-bit Zorro 2 memory space. And you can only have a maximum of 8 megabytes of 16-bit memory, you know, Zorro 2 memory. So if you're using a Picasso 2 board, you have to, I mean, the maximum amount of memory that you can have on your, you know, 16-bit memory, on your Zorro 2 bus, is six megabytes that's the maximum okay so if you have like commodore's 030 board with four megabytes and you're using commodore's 2091 board with two megabytes there's your six megabytes right there and of course you have two megabytes on your picasso 2 board that would be fine that's fine and a minimum one megabyte of chip memory when using the Picasso 2 board. Now, with only one megabyte of chip memory and only your eight megabytes of fast memory, you're limited to like 640 by 480 at 256 colors, which is fine for most people. You can, you can actually have a very nice uh, Workbench 3.9 setup at 640 by 480. 256 colors. That's that's a nice workbench. Now, if you want to go up to like 1024 by 768 at high color or true color, which is 16.7 million colors, then you will need 
uh, at least, well, you'll, you'll need the full 2 megabytes of chip memory, as well as, uh, I'd recommend a minimum of 16 megabytes of fast memory, like 32-bit like 32, uh, 32 memory. Like the memory on, like, your GVP uh, uh, 030 combo board, you know, those combo boards. Uh, that's what I use with this one. So I'll have 16 megabytes of 32-bit memory. See, the 32-bit memory is not part of that 8 megabytes 02 memory. It's not part of that. It's separate. It's considered processor memory. And uh, so you can have as much as that as you want, you know. But I'm going to have 16 megabytes of 32-bit memory. And that should be plenty. And then I'll have the 2 megabytes here on the card of video memory. And I'm also going to have 2 megabytes of chip memory. So I should be able to run this at 1024 by 768. But the thing is, though, the higher the screen resolution, the lower your monitor's refresh rate. And I actually don't like to drop below 60 hertz. Because of that, I'm probably going to have my Ami 2000 set up at 640 by 480, 256 colors. You know, I, I could try going, you know, bumping it up to true color, uh, 16. Uh, 0.7 million colors. I could try that, but I'm going to keep the resolution at 640 by 480 because then the monitor's refresh rate will be 60 hertz. Okay. If I increase the screen resolution, then the monitor frequency goes down. Okay, which I don't want. I think it's bad on your eyes. You, 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 need, at, you need at least 60 hertz in order for what you're viewing on the screen to be easy on your eyes, you know. So, yeah, I'll try different things. In fact, once I get this all set up, I'll take you guys into my computer room and I'll aim the camera at my LCD display and, and you get to see me work out all the details on this Picasso 2 board on, on my actual Amiga 2000 computer. So stay tuned for that, that second part. Um, of this video. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the work. The work on this uh, on this board. I was actually very surprised when I found out that there's not many videos about the Picasso 2 graphics card. I only found I think one or two on YouTube. You know, and I, and I found that very surprising. Like, nobody owns the Picasso 2 board. Okay? And I think that's because um, most people, especially over in Europe, they prefer the Amiga 4000 and the 1200. They don't like the Amiga 2000. Okay? And the, and the Picasso 2 board was mainly designed for the Amiga 2000. It's the best graphics card you can get for the Amiga 2000. And like the Amiga 2000, this board was also made in Germany. So it's a very high quality, very well designed, very laid out board. Nicely laid out board. It's a nice board. Okay. Um, and people don't use these boards, because it's a Zorro 2 board. They don't use these boards in an Amiga 4000. They just use the Picasso 4 board. So I think that's the main reason why. I mean, those are the reasons why you don't hear much about the, the Picasso 2 board, or you don't see any videos at all about this board. So I wanted to correct that. I wanted to at least produce several videos about this board and talk a little bit about it and uh, do a recap on it and tell you about the resistor that you have to remove that resistor and you know things like that because i think uh there are people out there that want to know more about this board and it's a shame that there's no videos out there like only one or two videos on youtube about this board 
and there's hardly any information at all on the internet. If you don't believe me, just type in Picasso 2 graphics board for Amiga 2000 and see what comes up. You'll be surprised. Yeah. So I thought I would do some videos about this board and post them on my YouTube channel. So next, I'm actually going to do the work uh, that I need to do on this board. So let's get started with that.